All right, guys, so this is the third video in the communication series, and the focus of this video is going to be what's called the five-factor model. And when I was looking through this, the USMLE outline for social science uh, communication, I think this is something that's it's evidence-based, and they can uh, attribute it to medicine and how patients are either going to uh, you know, follow through with care and, and what's the likelihood of, of them doing certain situations. So I think it's something... Um, definitely fair game, and I think by learning this or being familiar with it, I think we can stay ahead of the ahead of the curve and get those tough questions right. So, hope you like the video. All right, guys. So the first question reads: uh, Well, the the question is going to be which of the following personality traits, according to the five factor model, most closely describes this character these characteristics or this characteristic? Um, it says according to the five factor model, a patient who exhibits signs of being easily irritated. In, gener in generally apprehensive, reluctant to digest information, negative information, may have a predisposition to seek care for vague abdominal dyspepsia. Which of the following personality traits, according to the five-factor model, most closely describes this characteristic? Well, really where they're going on this, and this is more of the communication slash, you know, kind of a social, a social piece, but if you look up what the research says, this five-factor model basically says there's five uh, characteristics or five parts of the personality that are pretty much consistent over a, a person's lifetime, and that if you as a clinician can understand those five and be, just be aware of them, that you, know, you can understand better whether someone's going to follow through with preventative care, if they're going to be compliant with medications, and just have uh, pretty much a better clinical outcome altogether. So. We have to be at least familiar uh, for the step exams on this five-factor model because this is what the research actually says. So again, they got this person um, that's they're generally apprehensive, they're easily irritated, reluctant to digest negative information, you know. And we have these answer choices down here: is it openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, or neuroticism? Now I can tell you, I made it simple, right? This five-factor model. There's five of them. And here they are, you can off, you know, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And if you take the first letter of each of those, and there's your acronym, okay, OCEAN. So, again, uh, this is all based off the personality traits of people. And, you know, again, someone's personality is, it's their tendencies. Um, it's, it's how they react um, to others and in certain situations. So if someone is, you know, is the openness is basically saying uh, an appreciation for different or various experiences, okay? You know, are they open to something? And a lot of times when I'm interviewing somebody and I want to present something to them, I will always ask them, hey, are you open to the idea of this, you know, whatever I'm trying to uh, present to them? So I always have that little comment in there, but openness. And so op appreciation for a variety of experiences and, you know, kind of where you, the two extremes on that is, uh, is someone, you know, just more uh, prefer routine or are they more spontaneous, okay? Uh, yeah. So then the next one is conscientiousness. Now, conscientiousness is the tendency to exhibit self-discipline okay and again it's one of the five main factors of someone's personality self uh, discipline are they either impulsive the two extremes are are you ex impulsive versus you know disciplined or careful okay so we have openness which is appreciation for a variety of experiences conscientiousness is a tendency for self-discipline impulsive versus uh, discipline the next one is extroversion okay and basically, that's engagement in the uh, external world, right? Extrovert, introvert, um, external, I spelled that wrong, external world. And so are you reserved versus are, are you social? And I'm an example here, in a second here, I'm going to get an example of what the research actually said for each one of these. And if we know those examples, um, I think that's where they're going to go with it uh, if this is a test question for the, for the step exams, which I think is, you know, right up there. With, they have to ask questions on communication and uh, the social, and this is researched evidence-based. The next one is agreeableness, um, and that's basically someone's concern for social 
harmony, okay? And are you, uh, you know, I guess you could say, are you uncooperative or suspicious versus uh, trusting and helpful, okay? And really agreeableness, you know, it's interesting. Uh, the people, the, the research actually says the people who kind of uh, go further, who make, actually make good leaders are the ones who aren't always as agreeable. You know, you, you, know, you always know that person who's like a, uh, kind of a yes man, you know, they'll do anything, thinking that's going to help them, but actually it's the, it's the people who are, they give a little pushback. Uh, they're the ones that actually achieve a little bit higher um, in the business ladder, per se. Uh, so, and neuroticism, uh, the last one's going to be neuroticism, and, you know, we're kind of familiar with that term. But anyways, that's the tendency to experience uh, negative emotion, right? Like, are they neurotic? I mean, are they just kind of, you know, too much, always taking the negative aspect of things? That's neuroticism. Uh, so you, essentially, are you either calm uh, and confident versus, you know, anxious and, you know, pessimistic, uh, just more of a negative Nelly. Okay? So again, these are the five-factor model. It's talking about someone's personality. These are the five main characteristics, the five big ones that we should be aware of as, as clinicians because it can affect outcomes, okay? Again, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. So I also said there's gonna be uh, examples of each that the research said. So openness, how they, how they attached that one in, in the research is what they, they found out was bulimia, okay? Eating disorders. As someone who was, you know, say more open uh, to the idea of a treatment uh, actually had a, a better outcome. You know, they're going to they're gonna be open to the idea that something can help them. So again, so if you're interviewing someone who, you know, in this example has an eating disorder or something, you know, you, one of the things you want to kind of test during your interview is how open are they to a, perhaps a different outcome. Uh, the conscientiousness, uh, the, this was going to go back to the uh, dietary, you know, dietary habits. So anytime you, you see that one, I want you to kind of go in that direction. Uh, again, are they aware um, that there is a negative outcome? And actually, conscientiousness is when they did that research on ADHD and stuff, that that was one of the main, that was perhaps the main topic, whether someone was going to have a, a, uh, a good or negative outcome long term was their level of conscientiousness. But anyways, when you, when you talk about dietary habits, I want you to attach it to that one. Bulimia, I want you to t touch it to, attach it to openness. Dietary habits, conscientiousness, are they aware of making choices? Uh, and then extroversion, actually they attach this one to burnout. They found that, uh, say, nurses uh, in the study, the nurses who were more uh, extroverted had, more, had uh, better relationships or more relationships uh, with peers and such actually did not, you know, have a, have a, had a lower rate of burnout and stuff. So being extroverted, uh, you have to be aware of. And then uh, agreeableness. Uh, again, this is the one. Agreeableness is when you get to a, uh, their example was a liver donation. Okay, so I'd just say um, tissue donor, okay, but a, a, a liver donor, uh, a person with, you know, obviously a higher level of agreeableness is chances are going to be, I mean, you're not going to be a liver donor, but you're going to be a liver, kind of a, a receiver per se um, on this stuff. But when it comes to tissue donation or being, a, uh, I guess, an organ donor or a receiver, it's the higher level of agreeableness, um, again, because it goes back to suspicion versus trusting. And then, of course, neuroticism, they attached that one in the study to dyspepsia, okay? Now, again, you say, well, look, that's very, very specific. Yes, it is, but I'm telling you, if I'm writing questions for the USMLE or the STEP or NBME or any of these guys, I'm just going to go straight from the paper what the research says. So for what you got to memorize or what, you get, or what your take-home point is, is here, personalities, there's five big com five components, big components, the major ones, of someone's personality, and they are the ocean. Openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Okay, ocean. You say it a couple times, and it starts becoming more familiar. And then I want you to attach, because you can, you can kind of almost understand just by the, the word what it means, but I want you to attach bulimia with openness, dietary habits with conscientiousness, burnout with extroversion, liver donate, uh, you know, tissue donor um, to agreeableness, and uh, dyspepsia uh, to neuroticism. Okay? 
back to this question. I know we're deep into this. Uh, this person exhibits signs of being easily irritated and generally apprehensive, or reluctant to digest negative information, may have a predisposition to seek care for vague, um, uh, you know, for vague abdominal symptoms, right? So they're always going to go to the doctor, per se. Uh, they, and so which of the following personality traits of the five-factor model are you going to choose? And in this situation, the correct answer is going to be neuroticism. And why I'm saying you got to, like, you say, oh, well, I would have I got neuroticism because it's the only one that makes sense. Yes. But what if they would have put, um, you know, just anxiety up here or something generic like that? Well, that's not part of the five-factor model. The five-factor model says you better choose neuroticism, uh, even though they kind of, the definition is, is very close between those, okay? That's what I'm saying. I want you to know that. All right? Next question says, uh, which of the following statements made by, by the patient with an eating disorder, according to the five-factor model, would be most indicative of cognitive behavioral therapy for bulimia being more effective? All right. Five-factor model. We have ocean, okay? And again, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, neuroticism, bulimia, uh, dietary habits, uh, burnout, uh, tissue donor uh, donations, and then um, dyspepsia, okay? Uh, mild symptoms were, were what they use as an example. So in this situation, which one would be more indicative of behavioral therapy for bulimia? You better be jumping uh, all over openness, okay? All over openness. Now, which of these would be a, a statement for openness? I enjoy, I enjoy trying new things. I'm always prepared. Uh, I talk with many people at parties. I show my gratitude. I get stressed out easily. Okay? Well, obviously, I made it simple. Each one of these goes with uh, the corresponding ocean going down. So openness is going to be I enjoy trying new things. Conscientiousness is I'm always prepared. Extroversion, I talk with many people at parties. Agreeableness, I show my gratitude. Neuroticism, I get stressed out uh, easily. And you know that the step exams are very popular on these kind of statements and quotes. But when it comes to uh, uh, eating disorder, uh, say bulimia and such, I want you to jump all over openness, which you would choose, I enjoy trying new things, okay? Now, there were some limitations to the five-factor model that they did do in the research paper. Um, you know, everybody has kind of little nuances uh, in their personality. Uh, it's difficult to use in new situations, and of course, the physician can also be biased, you know, right? But anyways, five-factor model, ocean. Uh, last question is going to read, uh, psych psychology science outside medicine includes a specific branch that explores the domain of personality. The branch has many contradictory theories and, and findings that fail to replicate. However, one paradigm that has proven reliable is a five-factor model, ocean mnemonic. Uh, the core assumption of the ocean taxonomy is which of the following? Is it A, a few features are reproducible traits, partially predicting a person's behavior over the long intervals in similar situations? Is it B, people in general are very unpredictable when it comes to Western medicine? Is it C, people in general are very unpredictable when it comes to preventative medicine routines? Is it D, a patient's openness can sometimes predict the likelihood of liver donations from those uh, candidates? Now, again, uh, some of these, you know, they sound kind of true, and maybe so, but it's not back what the five-factor model kind of represents. When it comes to openness, we don't talk about liver donations, right? When it comes to um, openness, we talk about the eating disorder, which was what, which was what the research says. And then when I talk about uh, donations, uh, <laughs> agreeableness, and, uh, you know, again, uh, I should just say tissue donations. I shouldn't make it like a liver donation, right? Um, but anyways, agreeableness is you're, you're going to attach to that openness, bulimia. So it's not this guy. It's when I talk when we talk about what uh, personality is, it's going to be a. A few features are reproducible traits, partially predicting a person's behavior over the long intervals in similar situations. So again, guys, uh, five-factor model. Uh, know the ocean. Uh, be prepared and. Um, let's, let's put ourselves in the best position to be successful on this exam. So, hope it was helpful. Mm -hmm.